In Manchester, over 200 years ago, the largest ever political gathering of working people took place. They came from the surrounding towns of Bury, Middleton, Bolton, Salford, Eccles and Oldham, where Matthew, a seasoned protester, lives. I am Matthew. I am currently studying my GCSEs at Phillips High School in Whitefield. I am passionate about history and also do protesting in my spare time. So when I heard about the protest that happened 200 years ago in Manchester, I wanted to find out more. As an activist, Matthew's keen to find out about what happened in St Peter's Square and is meeting historian Robert Poole. So why did the people actually come to Manchester then in the first place? Most people didn't have the vote. Factory workers had very few rights, all the protection for workers had disappeared. The Corn Laws kept the price of bread extremely high and a belief had settled that no parliament which was democratic, would have done things like this. The parliament was in control of a kind of small clique of property people who were trying to hang on to power. So they were there to claim the vote. And the great irony was they were doing it here in Manchester. Manchester itself had no MP. Matthew's joining the annual commemoration of the Peterloo massacre. The first victim of Peterloo was William Files from Kennedy Street, Manchester. The two-year-old boy was knocked from his mother's arms by a cavalryman galloping along Cooper Street in response to the magistrate's order to disperse the crowd. William was trampled to death under the horse's hooves. Margaret Downs was cut down by a yeomanry sabre. Arthur Neal died of internal injuries caused by being truncheoned and crushed. Martha Partington, under the weight of other people falling on her, suffocated. The magistrates were in a house somewhere over there. Um, there was a whole row of houses and they'd very carefully taken up residence where they could see the platform. The magistrates and authorities at this stage simply didn't believe that it was possible for large numbers of working people to gather off their own bat without there being trouble. So they sent the deputy constable in to arrest the people on the platforms. They came in with the yeomanry. The yeomanry were completely untrained. They'd been drinking at lunchtime, common habit. One, one was said to be so drunk he could hardly sit on his horse. They were essentially amateurs. They were substantial property people, factory masters. They got stuck and they started lashing around them with sabres. The result was a great surge of people in all directions. And then the chairman of the magistrates, William Holton, seeing what was going on, called in the regular troops, the hussars, the mounted cavalry, to extricate the yeomanry and clear the field. As well as the deaths, hundreds were seriously injured. They'd walked into Manchester and were left to return home on foot at a time when internal wounds from sabre cuts were untreatable. Matthew's visiting the People's History Museum to read the press coverage. Newspapers then were heavily taxed and so were unaffordable to working people. So does that mean those clamping down and people reading about the massacre and protest in general? Yes, the huge amount of public discussion in the newspapers that had happened afterwards was exactly the kind of thing the government was trying to stop happening all along. The high Conservative government believed that unless you owned a significant amount of property and therefore had a stake in the country, you couldn't be trusted to exercise the vote. Um, and so ordinary people, your ancestors and mine, were quite outside the political nation. They were not citizens, they were subjects. Some of the sources seem to suggest that the authorities lost control. But was it that simple? Matthew's come to the National Archives in London, where they keep government papers. Historian Katrina Navikas is showing him the Home Office archives from 1819. I'm really excited. I actually started tearing up just before I walked into the archives when I was downstairs waiting. I'm really excited to see these documents. Yeah, because these are... 200 years old. This is from someone in Preston who's writing on the 31st of July 1819. To the Right Honourable Earl Sidmouth, the Home Secretary. So it's going right to the top. Yeah. He's saying he's seen that there's ideas of reform and rebellion 
formulating amongst the, the lower orders. So it means the working class, but that's just the word that they used at the time was the order that there's an order of society and that the higher classes, the higher orders are the people in charge. Um, which tells us something about the attitudes of the middle and upper classes towards the They look world. down on them. Um, or they, they, they're suspicious of them, yes. He says that they're making pikes, which are like spears, for diabolical purposes. So he thinks that they want to cause a revolution. So that's why he thinks it's necessary to spy on them and send information to the government. Well, we've got another letter here. Um, this one's from Middleton, and this describes there were women going from house to house begging for money, both in Middleton um, and in the neighbourhood, to make caps of liberty, which they intend to carry to the Manchester meeting. And people wore them as a symbol of reform. So it was originally associated with the French Revolution. So they'd wear them or they'd put them on a pole to say, here we are, we're reformers, we're campaigning for reform. Reform groups were all over the country, particularly in the industrial regions. It's saying here that there's been a meeting at Rochdale and they marched in procession through the town with flags flying and inscriptions on them. They want no corn laws, universal suffrage and annual parliament. 30 years after the French Revolution, many regarded Britain's parliamentary system, which was based on property ownership, as unfair, unrepresentative and corrupt. Matthew's about to discover how the government viewed the people's desire for reform. This is volume three from the miscellaneous Private and Secret, it says. So this is proper secret documents. This is for the government's eyes only. And it tells us something about what's going on behind the scenes. If you looked at all those other documents, you might just think that the government's just keeping an eye on things. Here's a letter from the Home Office to one of the magistrates in Bolton. It's the opinion of Lord Sidmouth, the Home Secretary, that your country will not be tranquilised until blood should have been shed. That's a really powerful statement. They need to shed some blood in order to put down all these demonstrations. So the government's ordering them to shed a little blood just to show their authority? Well, not ordering them, but it's suggesting yeah. that that's necessary. Either by the law or the sword. So you either do things legally, but if that's not working, then you do things by force, by the mm. sword. And that tells you something about the way that the government are thinking, that they're prepared to put these meetings down by force. Um, because they are worried about the threat of um, the huge numbers of working-class people demanding the vote. I'm shocked and slash stunned that the government would condone such behaviour at the time. Well, you've got to also put yourself in the mind of the government. They certainly thought that a revolution was on the horizon, so they are fearing the worst. So this is the obvious thing for them to do, is to say, well, if you can't put it down through legal means, you've got to put it down by force. I feel upset about how the government viewed protesters back 200 years ago and how they intended to deal with the protesters before they've even started the protest. Protesting gets our views across from the little man. It helps the little man get the views across to the big people who are in charge of the country. And as we've seen from Peter Lee, there is change after protesting. It may take years, it might take a century or so, but there is always change after protesting. 